are you pregnant if yes would you like your baby to develop any defect after the birth would you like your baby unborn baby to develop diabetes once it is born and when it grows up it has all the complications that diabetes can have do you want your baby to get blind do you want your baby to have uh, diseases in the in the kidney do you want your baby to have their legs amputated once they grow up none of the mother wants that so in order to have a healthy baby you need to have your blood sugar done at least 3 times when you are pregnant this blood sugar testing is all the more important if you are obese if your child was born last time was obese and if you belong to a family who has a diabetic in the family or you had diabetes in your previous pregnancy the most important part of it is if you are an asian if you are a pakistani if you are an indian bangladeshi or sri lankan then your risk of diabetes increases many fold so get this test done at least 3 times when you are you are when you are pregnant you also need to take care of your lifestyle especially if you are eating too much don't eat for two when you are pregnant if you are sedentary if you think that resting during pregnancy is very important then you are at risk if you think that eating lots of burgers biryanis pulao's and sweet dishes would help you that's not going to help you that's going to increase your risk of developing diabetes more especially when you are pregnant i am dr shabeen naz masood the gynecologist with special interest in diabetes in pregnancy you can text your messages on the number that is given and your questions whenever you are feel to contact us thank you very much
you pregnant? If yes, would you like your baby to develop any defect after the birth? Would you like your baby, unborn baby, to develop diabetes once it is born and when it grows up, it has all the complications that diabetes can have? Do you want your baby to get blind? Do you want your baby to have uh, diseases in the in the kidney? Do you want your baby to have their legs amputated once they grow up? None of the mother wants that. So, in order to have a healthy baby, you need to have your blood sugars done at least three times when you are pregnant. This blood sugar testing is all the more important if you are obese. If your child who was born last time was obese and if you belong to a family who has a diabetic in the family or you had diabetes in your previous pregnancy. The most important part of it is if you are an Asian, if you are a Pakistani, if you are an Indian, Bangladeshi or Sri Lankan, then your risk of diabetes increases many fold. So get this test done at least three times when you are you're, when you are pregnant. You also need to take care of your lifestyle, especially if you are eating too much, don't eat for two when you are pregnant. If you are sedentary, if you think that resting during pregnancy is very important, then you are at risk. If you think that eating lots of burgers, biryanis, pulao's and sweet dishes would help you, that's not going to help you. That's going to increase your risk of developing diabetes more, especially when you are pregnant. I am Dr. Shabin Naz Masood, the gynecologist with special interest in diabetes in pregnancy. You can text your messages on the number that is given and your questions whenever you are free to contact us. Thank you very much. Are you pregnant? If yes, would you like your baby to develop any defect after
السلام علیکم السلام علیکم ٹھیک ہے اچھا جی بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ویلکم یو آل ان ٹوڈے سیشن دیٹ از اپ ڈیٹس ان ڈائبٹیز ٹرینڈس فار دا فیوچر دس پروگرام وڈ بی این آسم ایونٹ ایز یو کین سی اینڈ ایز آئی ول بی ایبل ٹو یو نو لائک انٹروڈیوس مائی گیس اسپیکرز ود یو گائز بٹ بفور وی بگن دا پروگرام وی اسٹارٹ ود دا نیم آف آل مائی اللہ I request Hafiz Bilal Tahir to please come on the podium and recite few verses of the Holy Quran. Hafiz Bilal Tahir. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله حافظ بلال Uh, we start uh, with the official proceedings of our today's program as as the name as the topic as the you know like the, I will I will introduce with the agenda it's updates in diabetes and trends for the future uh, our guest speakers for today's programs are so renowned that indeed none of them require any introduction today's session would be started my professor abdul basit who is the director of bite bite state of the art diabetes management institute in pakistan known worldwide for its research and for its academic activities he is professor of medicine bakai medical university secretary general diabetic association of pakistan professor abdul basit would be talking about diabetes registry in a low resource setting pakistan perspective just after the talk of professor basit without any delay because we have a separate question and answer session that we will be taking at the end of this program so please write your and write if you have any questions about the talk of professor basit please write it on a piece of paper so that you can ask at the end of session professor abdul basit would be followed by dr shabinan masood 
another very renowned figure, known for his worthiness, known for his hard work. She is the Joint Secretary of Diabetic Association of Pakistan, consultant gynecologist, Medicare, Cardiac and General Hospitals, HOD, Obstetric and Gynecology, Isra University. She requires no introduction. She will be talking on updates on GDM. After the talk of Dr. Shabina Masood, Professor Zaman Sheikh would be coming and he would enlighten us about the optimizing insulin therapy, basal insulins, and beyond. Uh, that, I'm sorry, that is the session of Dr. Zahid Mia. That is the session of Dr. Zahid Mia would be coming and he would be talking. Dr. Zahid Mia, as you all know, uh, very dynamic, very known figures to everyone. He is an associate professor of medicine at Wakai Medical University, champions of diabetic foot, and you know, like he's a vice president of Diabetic Foot International. Uh, after the talk of Dr. Zahid Mia, uh, we would be having a talk by Professor Zaman Sheikh, my mentor, my teacher. Uh, he is Joint Secretary DAP, Director, Sir Institute of Diabetes and Endocrinology. Uh, so we would be enlightened by his talk of upcoming newer medication for diabetes mellitus. Dear listeners and dear audience who are present on, during this uh, session, at the end of all these talk, we will be taking the question and answer sessions. That would be joined by all of these, the panel of experts, and I expect, you know, like a very interaction session during that time. So please relax, enjoy, and update yourself with the diabetes management trends for the future. Thank you. Uh, my title is Diabetes Registry in a Low Resource uh, Setting, Pakistan Perspective. At the outset, I'm very grateful to Sanofi for sponsoring our program. This program is being done from the uh, platform of uh, Diabetic Association of Pakistan. And this is what Diabetic Association is uh, serving for the last 40 years. I have the honor to be its Secretary General after the sad demise of Professor Abdusama Shaila Saab. Uh, may Allah bless his soul, may him rest in peace, uh, uh, who passed away last year in March. Uh, so what is our registry? It's a population-based uh, registry which contains records for people diagnosed with a specific type of disease residing within a defined geographic region. So registry can be a small registry if it's for a pathology which is uh, not highly prevalent in that society. For example, if you want to make a registry of Turner's, the volume will be different, the objective will be different. If you are talking of registry of chronic diseases, the volume is different and the reason are different. We do have successful disease registries and high-income countries like Australia, New Zealand, uh, Korea, Netherlands, EU trials, Japan, Germany, etc. But we do have successful registries in low-middle income countries like Pan-African registry, Peruvian registry, Sri Lankan registry, Iranian registry, Indian registry. So registries are possible and are becoming more and more possible even in low-middle income countries. We do have some successful registries in Pakistan, like the Cancer Registry, Cardiac Registry, Prop, Pakistan National Joint Registry, PNKR, led by Professor Shahid Noor, uh, Cardiac One by Bashir Hanif, Stroke Registry by Fase uh, Shakir. A Diabetes Registry of Pakistan uh, is what I am going to talk about today. Uh, main is Prop, which is Diabetes Registry of Pakistan. It does have some registries as part of it. Uh, we have type 1 diabetes for drop 1, type 2 diabetes for drop 2, gestational diabetes for drop G, uh, foot ulcers for drop F, and so on and so forth. The collaborators for drop have been Pakistan Health Research Council, and in fact, we had a meeting very recently, and we decided that very soon this uh, registry will 
will be mandatory by the federal. Why are you doing that? You are doing this. Has a such advisory board, Chartered Accountant Pakistan. Why? It's worth mentioning here that, like for example, the Chartered Registry is led by Bashir Hanif, and it's basically an intervention. This is developed by the International Chartered Society. And what very recently the development is there that the Supreme Court has ordered that all all uh, NGOgraphy suites across the country uh, shall be sharing the data and having in, uh, data pool in the central target registry of parts. Now this is a major. Likewise, in PNJR, Shaikh Hussain has been able to pool. 50 plus centers across the country for joint replacement data that they've been going on for five years. So registries are now possible, and more and more collaborators are being involved. Health Web, which is one of the collaborators of this registry, is Health Research Advisory Board. Uh, it's a think tank of clinicians led by Professor Emeritus, professor of the professors, well-renowned figure nationally, internationally. Uh, Professor Abdul Kafar, and I have the honor to work with him for the last eight years, learning from him as vice chairman, uh, visionary person, and uh, a dynamic, and he's from the front. And Dr. Zaki is our general secretary. So, what is wrong? Basic steps: How to build up a database registry. First is user login. Second, data entry. third is quality assurance and data verification is so important so data entry is easy but it has to be going to the phase of quality assurance and data verification periodic evaluation by the main center and then finally is the annual report if we are able to have this close group or this circle uh, this includes uh, data entry and evaluation then finally finally annual report generation which is like a You can call a completing the loop of the audit itself. What are the aims and objectives of COP? So we talk of incidents and prevalence, national action plan and prevention policy, structured and uniform clinical care, implementation of national guidelines, specific postgraduate teaching, preventive managers, policy making legislation, linking with regions like that is the study group idea of the. So there are very broad aims and objectives, very powerful aims and objectives for registry. This is something which shall be ideally, ideally taken up by the ministry, by the federal government, by the by, and 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 they can take it to people like USAID and WHO and IDEA, but so far so. How does this idea came? Or when when we were able to get it materialized. In fact, we have been talking of registry from 2006. If you see my lectures of the IDEX first IDEX first International Diabetes Endocrine Conference 2006, I I suggested to the National Endocrine Faculty to develop diabetes registry. But somehow, her cheese cake was so that there was a time Allah ki taraf se ke this is decided. So second National Diabetes Survey. Taken in collaboration with the Ministry of National Health Services, regulation and coordination, with principal investigators, the late Prof. Shira, me, myself, from our place, she was PHRC in Asha, brought the approval from Biotech Committee, came with these numbers of diabetes: 26.3 percent diabetes, 14.4 percent of pre-diabetes. So now is the time to develop diabetes registry of Pakistan with the login portal. Three levels of registry. There are generally worldwide accepted minimal, intermediate, and optimal. Minimal involves only baseline data. Intermediate baseline data with biochemical variables. The optimal baseline data with biochemical parameters and complication data. Now you can imagine the difference between the two. One registry has just only baseline data. That's okay. Pure Pakistan me, jo diabetic ka register baseline data. One ki ek ni aap ki hai. Now this is something we would like to in the in the long run. It comes from secondary tertiary centers shall have biochemical data. And one then is the ideal center and institutions are for data studies or such. We need data with biochemical parameters and complication data. Up to now, we have only only pros and cons, which is perhaps not the scope of today's lecture. So this is how 
you log in into the registry. This is how the participants get their baseline data coming up. This is how the registry form is being created. And these are the data if you want to enter about the complication percent. What will be the organogram? What is the organogram of the drop? So it's a drop PI and pro PI uh, collaborating with the ministry and PHRC, international and national collaborators. And as I said, we have drop one, drop two, each having their own lead, uh, drop F, drop D, each having their own lead, drop manager, then a drop research director and database director. And then we have provincial coordinator. Provisional coordinators, i.e., provincial coordinators. For the type of and then institutional coordinators and data teams. I must admit here that when I showed the, uh, the registries uh, list, uh, I couldn't update it. One is SOGP, Society of Ops and Dining, which is also developing. In fact, four or five registries. One of their registry is GDM registry, and it may be a time comes when we and uh, IE, the diabetologist, and or the DEF. Uh, with collection for GP may have one registry, but they are also collecting data and working on, on gestational diabetes registry. Like for type 1, we are having NICH on board, but NICH is developing their own registry, I understand the leadership of Jamal Raza. So it has been decided, okay, if you come from the childhood, uh, neonatal, infant, childhood, uh, up to the adult adolescence, and then perhaps a time will come when you will have the amalgamation of the drop 1 registry. Okay, expected outcomes from disease to observe the disease burden, to observe the course of disease, to examine factors that include influence prognosis and quality of life, to describe care patterns, including appropriateness of care and disparities in delivery of care, adjustments in policy making at local division and national level. Yes, in Manica, there are pros and cons. But what we have started to do, in fact, when we say what are the problems, barriers, challenges, etc. Uh, what I have learned, and in fact, my team as well uh, at TEP, uh, Shabinad and Dawan uh, Sheikh, uh, the joint two joint secretaries, we have decided, and in fact, decided at Pied as well. Highly problems ki baat hai. Don't talk of problems. Come up with solutions as well. Even if they are not 100% perfect solutions, but we need solutions. Zindagi gudargi problem, problem kinate hai, and nothing constructive has been done. Registries banane ki, thousands of problems. Right, come up with solutions. Can we start at a low level? And answer is yes. So we have a weak and inorganized health infrastructure. This goes without change. Solution. We will do capacity building through training and creating employments. We ought to have private public partnership. We are, are forcing or in fact pushing our networking and collaboration. And then we expect and we're getting support from NGO and others. This lack of political work. So what to do? Initiate the process through missionary zeal and with available resources. Can you imagine that we didn't have enough resources to do the IBM-C and the profiles? But we had 17 teams who have visited uh, urban and rural areas and have collected plus samples of 10,000 plus people. So what? So we had the resources only to do GTT, we did GTT. And then we went to ministry and said that this has been done. We only now need support for LPA1C and uh, a lipid profile. So, you share some the then federal secretary of health. She agreed, so please come along and they get help. So, initiate the process. Come to Shuruka. What we do is wait for funding. Oh, thus, Karo, I didn't need to make a counter. And then, thus, Karo, I'm in so initiate the process. Government gets affected, realizing the importance. Government has thousands of priorities. And they have got hundreds of applicants. So where do they go? That's why the applicant will say, who will say, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Machine is easy. I'm going to go. 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 I'm Implementation and surveillance get stronger with government involvement. Kitne bhi muscles aap ke hon, kitni powers, kitni NGOs, kitne donations. Government ke to muscle or machine bhi kya ke kuch nahi. Chota sa moj choti si government, billions of donations kuch nahi hai, choti sa moj chota government ka. So you need to have implementation and surveillance gets stronger with government involvement. 
बॉडीज लाइक आल्सो प्लेयर फैसिलिटेशन यूज ऑफ मीडिया जब तो मीडिया का जमाना इंक्रीज पब्लिक अफेयर एडवोकेसी कंपेन चला है अब जैसे आजकल हम स्वीट स्वीट एंड बेवरेजेस के खिलाफ कंपेन चला रहे हैं अलहमद मीडिया सपोर्टिंग सोशल सिविल सोसाइटी सपोर्टिंग सोशल मीडिया से भी मॉडल को ठीक है बात करते करते कभी असर करती है अगेन गवर्नमेंट हैव हंड्रेड्स ऑफ राइट्स वी डू नॉट यू हैव टू वेयर देयर शूज टू फाइंड आउट व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज हैपनिंग देयर व्हिच आर वी वी डोंट हैव टाइम फॉर इट इन इशू ओके बट एट लीस्ट कीप प्रेसिंग ऑन द एजेंडा एनी टाइम विल कम दे विल से नो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लेट मी डू सो लिंकिंग रजिस्ट्रीज विद लेजिस्लेशन डब्ल्यू टी वी हैव स्केसिटी टू रिसोर्सेस यू नो दैट मेक इट कॉस्ट एंड टाइम इफेक्टिव मेक सस्टेनेबल मॉडल्स develop preventive strategies then attract donors and philanthropy aap ye keh dijiye ki 3 crore diabetics hain unka data aa gaya to hame pata chal jaye ki okay kis ka ideology control hai kitna blood pressure kitni aankhe badh gayi kitne gurde badh gaye primary care ke andar scanment kind of secondary tertiary care ke billions of dollars bacha you show it and you do it so scarcity of resources ko tackle karna there limitations of hcps to support it this is yes family physician hai primary care mein सारे को अपने कमाने का मतलब वो वो आपको रजिस्ट्री में टिका दे देन यू शुड हैव कैरियर और गोल्स ओरिएंटेड इंसेंटिव्स यू शुड डेवलप मिनिमल मॉडल भाई 10 पैरामीटर 10 पैरामीटर भरना आसान जी 150 पैरामीटर है जनाब बड़ा कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव डेटा जमा हो रहा है कोई दे ही नहीं रहा तो कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव डेटा क्या जमा हो रहा है पांच सेंटर्स दिए जा रहे हैं 500 सेंटर्स का डेटा लेना हैव टू हैव मिनिमल मॉडल यूजर फ्रेंडली डेटा मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम एंड एडवोकेट एनमाइजेशन ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक है इंटरनेशनल बॉडीज पर आप जाते हैं हम डब्ल्यू एच ओ के पास गए यूके के अंदर बात की रजिस्ट्री के रहने का हाउ टू इंश्योर हाउ वुड यू इंश्योर एडवोकेट एनमाइजेशन अभी वर्ल्ड डायबिटीज फाउंडेशन से बात हुई रहने का हाउ वुड यू इंश्योर दिस जस्ट इज इम्पोर्ट एंड जस्ट वाई एवरी कॉम्पिटेंट एनी कैन नॉट बी कैन नॉट बी दन हो विल बी सिक्योरिंग डेटा नो इट हैज टू बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थी given to very strong holds people either the government or the private sector the top registry main who will ensure that there is no no data cheating etc no breach and intellectual property stays there anonymization in privacy so we had this first annual report of drop published and for example this was first drop one you can see the trend trend of glycated hemoglobin एन टाइप वन डायबिटिक्स वही था अब अगर आप ये तीन सालों के अंदर शो कर रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट को और इसके तीन साल बाद आप साथ पे ले दिस इज हाउ दे विल से नो दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच वर्स सो दीस आर द बेस लाइन एंड आफ्टर 3 इयर्स नेफ्रोपैथी न्यूरोपैथी नेफ्रोपैथी अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह इट्स इट्स स्टैटिक दिस इज द पेपर पब्लिश फॉर हाइपरटेनस फॉर्म ऑफ टाइप वन ड्रॉप फ्रॉम फॉर प्री डायबिटीज अरे क्या रजिस्ट्री से प्री डायबिटीज की अप्रेस हो सकती है कैन बी प्रिवेंट पीपल्स वर्ल्ड आइडेंटिफिकेशन आंसर इज यस नॉट पर दिस रजिस्ट्री बट बट अनदर वन विच विल इंक्लूड प्री डायबिटीज आप ये स्कोरिंग सिस्टम बनाया हुआ हमने थर्टी सेकेंड यू कैन फाइंड आउट योर स्कोर दिस इज कॉल्ड रेपिड स्कोर इफ योर एज इज लेस देन फोर्टी जीरो फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी वन मोर देन फिफ्टी थ्री आपको अपने स्कोर पता चल ऑडियंस कैन मेक इट इन थर्टी सेवन एम आई Zero, one, or three. अपनी एज पता है. Circumferences, base circumference for male less than thirty-five point five inch zero. More than that two. For females less than thirty-one point five zero. More than that two. Two sir, सवाल का पता चल गया इसको. Either you are zero or two. And with no family history, zero. And with a family history, parent, brother, sister, uh, yes, one. कोई भी. So one may be sure. अब इसका इसको if it is four or more than four. Please contact your doctor. You are at risk of developing diabetes. Thirty seconds, and no, you know, either you are at risk or not. So we are trying to get the mobile technology important. So, अभी तो सिर्फ टेलीनॉर has come forward and has sent ten million messages. It has to be millions and millions in future time. I think I'll finish here. I've taken up about twenty minutes. I think the international association, then collaboration, the national association, then collaboration. Again, I will be very grateful for thanking uh, Sanofi and I thank Zaman and Shabin who are working untiringly uh, with me for the Diabetic Association of Pakistan. Uh, we are in the phase of remodeling, revamping, expanding, restructuring, taking Diabetic Association of Pakistan uh, for, further ahead. in national international field for my must say that the legacy of prof shera shall continue which has 
He has carried for around 40 years. And inshallah, we are trying our best. Uh, we all three are working as team to carry on the message across uh, national and uh, international fronts uh, for Diabetic Association of Pakistan. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saif, for a very kind introduction. And I will start in the name of Allah, the most beneficial, the most merciful. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim And the topic of my presentation today is screening for gestational diabetes mellitus, when, why, and how. And this difficult topic, I would say, is given to me for presentation by Professor Abdul Basit. I am thankful to him. And I would say that it is good to focus on the things that really matter to you. And gestational diabetes mellitus that really matters to us. But having said that, this is a story of despair and despondency. And it's not good to start the presentation with the stories of disappear and despondency. But uh, let me say that in spite of 100 years of insulin centenary, we are celebrating this year and the year to come. Still our women, most of our women who are with gestational diabetes, are, they seem to be residing in pre-insulin era. And let me share this story of Mrs. X. She came to us in January this year. She is seventh gravida, para four plus two. Presently in her 16th week of pregnancy. And in spite of delivering six times, she has none of the child alive. And she is diagnosed, she was diagnosed as GDM previously and treated but with improper doses of oral hypoglycemic drugs. Meri shadi ko na 15 saal ho gaye. Mere na 6 bachche na khot ho gaye. Yehi sugar ke masle ki wajah se. Abhi ye satwa bachcha hai mera. Chautha chal raha hai mera. Ye bhi yehi masla ho raha hai. Abhi bhi sugar ka masla ho raha hai. Pehle bhi sugar ki wajah se कोई आठवें महीने में बचा गया हुआ है कोई सातवें में कोई छठे महीने में चला गया है एंड देन दिस अगेन दिस वीडियो वाज टेकन ऑफ द सेम वुमेन ऑन 31st मई 2021 आफ्टर शी डिलीवर्ड को मेरा नाम जायदा है मैं यहां तो थे मैंने भी आई थी इलाज भी बहुत करवाया था मगर यहां तो थे मैंने भी जब से आई हूं यहां टेस्ट करवाया टेस्ट में मेरा शुगर निकला है पहले बच्चे भी मेरे शुगर की वजह से चले गए मुझे पता ही नहीं चला यहां भी टेस्ट करवाया शुगर निकला यहां शुगर भी मेरी कंट्रोल आ गई शुक्र है अब अल्लाह ताला की मर्जी से बच्चा भी पाए और छह बच्चे ना मेरे पेट में ही मर गए थे वो बच्चे नहीं है मेरे अब 9 महीने में मेरा ब्लड प्रेशर हाई हो रहा था वो उसी की वजह से मेरा सिगर भी हुआ शुक्र है अब ये सातवां बच्चा है मेरी गोद में अल्लाह ने मुझे नवाजा है सो this uh, lack of timely screening diagnosis costed this woman years of despair, deprivation, social stigma, physical and mental anguish. And she could not enjoy the joy of motherhood. So we healthcare professionals, do we have any justification for this omission? Very rightly said that for one mistake made for not knowing, 10 mistakes are made for not looking. 
progress in the field of diabetes has led to the shift in the care of diabetes and brought the issue of quality of life to the forefront. And we can see diabetes educator, diabetes eye clinic, kidney, foot care, and screening and diagnostic things. But in any of the diabetic clinic, female sexual health concerns, medical genetics and counseling, and personalized medicine is not seen in our setups. We need to focus on the women holistically. So with these, with these uh, not very good start, uh, a disparate start, I would like to focus on introduction, when to screen, why to screen, how to screen, and diagnostic criteria. And finally, a little bit about pharmacological treatment. The most important part is screening. Let me start with the introduction. As we all know, what is gestational diabetes mellitus? The definition, though not agreed universally, but whatever is available is that it is one of the gestational diabetes is the onset of elevated blood sugars during pregnancy. And it is also called hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Carbohydrate intolerance resulting in hyperglycemia of variable severity with onset or first recognition during pregnancy is another definition which most of us follow. Gestational diabetes is not new. It was first detected in 1824 in Germany and the things they keep on continuing uh, later on. But the recorded history of diabetes in pregnancy over the past 200 years is essentially the story of recognition of adverse effects of hyperglycemia on both mother and fetus. And unfortunately, even in this century, even at this state, we are still not able to address these adverse effects appropriately. And as a result, these IDF uh, estimates to, of 223 million women of reproductive age and beyond are living with diabetes. 22 million women are with diabetes and 54 million women had impaired glucose tolerance test or pre-diabetes in their reproductive age. Another uh, statistics which is given by FIGO and Pakistan is one of those seven countries which account for 55% of global live births. That includes including Pakistan, India, China, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Brazil, Mexico. And they account for 55% of global live births and 55% global burden of diabetes. That means one in six live births are affected by hyperglycemia in pregnancy. And there's a wide prevalence of one to 28% of all pregnancies of GDM. Why is that so? And this wide prevalence of uh, GDM, as we saw earlier, has led to the global burden of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Basically, if we look at this map, the gray area shows that the prevalence data on hyperglycemia in pregnancy is not available. This is a global picture. And it is basically because of lack of definition, uh, agreed definition, and lack of agreed screening protocols all over the world. And this is the reason that it has failed to grab the attention of the policymakers. If the prevalence figures are not available, how would that, how would they affect, uh, affect the, uh, uh, the attention of the policymakers? So the point of discussion deliberations is, I already have told about the introduction. Now, another point of, uh, discussion is that when to screen, the most important part. And we are at a complete loss uh, in this jigsaw puzzle. And as I said earlier, that there's no agreed screening as well as diagnostic standards globally in one country, in one hospital, and in different units of the same hospital. So for to overcome this uh, dilemma, we decided to have a guideline for management of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. And I was privileged to be the chair and this duty was assigned to me by Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology of Pakistan. 
And these uh, guidelines, they were endorsed by Diabetes in Asia study group. It was prepared in a short time of eight to nine months and is, has been published in Journal of Diabetology in, on 25th December last year. And here uh, we have tried to have an in-depth review of the global clinical practice guidelines for GDM. More than 20 guidelines were considered, referred, and we tried to uh, bring the things which are suitable and which are pragmatic for our situation. And I'm thankful to very senior people in our obstetrics and gynecology from Pakistan uh, for authoring this guideline. Another guideline immediately after the publication of Pakistan guideline, International Diabetes Federation and Middle East North African region, uh, again, uh, gave me the privilege to chair the guidelines for the management of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. And these guidelines have been published on 21st July this year. And I'm thankful to the authors. They were about 29 authors from 19 countries in MENA region. And I'm thankful to the authors for their passion, inspiration, and insane amount of time to craft these guidelines. And these guidelines are not to be shelved. They have to be used by the people in order to avoid discrepancies in diagnosis, management, screening, and other aspects. Now, again, coming when to screen. These figures are not now new to us for Pakistan. The prevalence of overall diabetes is more than 26% and pre-diabetes is 14 to 14%. And this study, which is, uh, which is uh, published, this survey, which was published by Professor Abdul Basid and his team clearly shows that overweight in Pakistan are more than 76% and 62% are obese. With these figures, do we need to have an early or a late screening protocol? By early, I mean first trimester screening. So Asian ethnicity, as we are, obesity, we just saw, higher body mass index and insulin resistance are added risk factors for undiagnosed diabetes in early pregnancy. This has been clearly shown that how obese is our population by this survey, which was very nicely conducted and published in 2017. And we know that women do not attend the clinics unless and until they are either suffering or either they are pregnant. So where metabolic testing outside pregnancy is not commonly performed, this increases the need for early screening during pregnancy to identify and treat this glycemia before the period of rapid fetal organogenesis, that is from zero to eight weeks, to avoid congenital fetal abnormalities. And this early and late screening protocol has already, has, is being published in STRIDE study, and it shows the prevalence of GDM is high even during the first trimester in Asian Indian population. So we extra extrapolate most of our figures from Indian studies. And this calls for early screening for GDM among high-risk ethnic groups like we Asians. And this is also evident from the uh, project WDF, World Diabetes Foundation GDM project, uh, which, for which I was a principal in this investigator. This was the second largest project assigned to Pakistan. And it clearly shows that women who were less than 14 weeks of gestation, uh, if they were screened, 34% uh, of them were screened positive for hyperglycemia. Whereas we can clearly see that only 24% uh, of the women they attended in their first 20 weeks of pregnancy. And in spite of this, we can see that 34% of them were screened positive uh, when they were in their early first, uh, second trimester. So if they would have attended earlier, we could have more positive cases in early, uh, uh, early gestation. So this is the reason that we asked for an early uh, blood glucose screening instead of waiting 
for OGTT around 24 to 28 weeks, as is given by most of the um, most of the guidelines, international guidelines. Now, the second question which comes is, why is screening and diagnosis of hyperglycemia important? This painting depicts three women carrying the same pot in their own different ways. Each woman carries her responsibility differently, so we don't have to compare women. But as far as gestational diabetes or hyperglycemia in pregnancy is concerned, whatever is the responsibility, whatever is the role of the woman, once they are pregnant, they need to have the same, almost the same uh, diagnostic criteria, few of the diagnostic criteria that we recommend for our women. So why is gestational diabetes important? There's increased production of reactive oxygen species, which play a key role in the pathogenesis of diabetic complications produced during hyperglycemia. And when these reactive oxygen species, they increase the scavenging proper uh, capacity of the cell, then reactive oxygen species, they ensure oxidative stress. So let us look increased glucose levels in the mother. This is the mother, this placenta, and this is a fetal, uh, uh, fetal milieu. So increased glucose levels in the mother, they freely cross the placenta by facilitated diffusion, and that whatever is the level of glucose in the mother, same will be reflected in the fetus. Another important thing is that in, because of increased glucose levels, there could be increase in hemoglobin A1c and poor dissociation of oxygen that leads to hypoxia and polycythemia and hyperbilirubinemia in fetus. This increased glucose levels, hyperglycemia, that causes inflammation and oxidative stress, and this oxidative stress leads to fetal malformation. The things do not stop here, but we all know that if the mother is diabetic and she's not taking care of her pregnancy, there's a greater risk of her developing type 2 diabetes in later life. And this fetus and, when it, and the newborn, the repercussions are that this fetus is likely to develop obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome when it, is, when it reaches the adolescent age. Uh, abortions, miscarriages, iatrogenic prematurities and malformations, congenital malformations, poor fetal outcome leading to intrauterine fetal death, and macrosomia, uh, big babies leading to shoulder dystocia and house palsy are few of the complications that we can see in uncontrolled, undiagnosed, uncontrolled uh, diabetes, uh, pregnant, uh, diabetes in pregnancy. Not only this, the long-term complications associated with GDM uh, are that 60% of the women with past history of GDM, they are likely to develop type 2 diabetes mellitus. And not only this, but 65% risk of cardiovascular disease in later life. And the child can have diabetes, obesity, and delayed motor development. If the women are followed over a long period of time, then in five years of time, 80% of them, they are likely to develop type 2 diabetes. And this study was published in 2015. Gestational diabetes is associated uh, with incident diabetes in childhood and youth. By childhood, I mean 0 to 12 years and youth 12 to 22 years. This was a retrospective cohort study. Although we know that type 1 and type 2 diabetes are established risk factors for diabetes, and GDM may be a risk indicator for diabetes in offspring before 22 years of age. What does that mean? This is an indicator. This indicator has the potential to stimulate clinicians, parents, even children and youth to consider the possibility of diabetes if offspring of a mother with gestational diabetes develops signs and symptoms such as polyuria, 
polydipsia, weight loss, or fatigue. This study was published in 2019, April. So as is very rightly said, that when a woman is pregnant, she is also pregnant with her grandchild. This is because of the intergenerational transmission of diabetes. So if mother is taken care, our future generations can be saved. We can save so many amputations, so many blindness, and so many other complications of diabetes if a mother is taken care of when she is pregnant. And similar findings were seen in, again, World Diabetes Foundation GDM uh, project of Pakistan, where 13,000, more than 13,000 women were screened. And we saw that the mother who had diabetes, the mother of the pregnant women, if they had diabetes, hypertension, and obesity, these women had 12% risk of, they have 12% of them, they developed GDM in the index pregnancy as compared to father and siblings. So the next is how to screen and what should be the diagnostic criteria. So when it comes to how to screen, GDM is one health issue, is one health issue that healthcare professionals need to be aware of. The simpler the process, the less likely will be the mistakes. So screening, there are two words of screening. Either you do a universal screening, screening all women who come to your clinic, or do a selective screening. So by selective screening, we mean that those women who have risk factors. So uh, it is recommended that those with risk factors should never be missed for screening. Otherwise, universal screening, irrespective of risk factor, is recommended. And we, if we talk of risk factors, there are there are five risk factors, especially which should not be uh, missed. Two are related to history. That is previous history of pre uh, GDM in pregnancy, previous GDM, uh, GDM in previous pregnancy, and family history of diabetes. Two risks are related to history. And two risks are related to obesity. That is, if the mother is obese or the child the current, in the current pregnancy or in the previous pregnancy was macrosomy. And the last and the most important thing is ethnicity. We Asians have already, uh, Pakistani Asians, we already are carrying one risk factor. And we saw in the survey of 2017 that a large number of our population is already obese. So having two risk factors, we don't have to go for a selected or a risk factor screening. We have to have a universal screening screen all pregnant women who come to your clinic. And this has been very nicely shown in one of the studies uh, which was done uh, by Professor by Dr. Musarat and myself and our team that family history of diabetes is not known in 28% of the women. And there were no risk factors in 25% of the women. This study is published uh, in 2018. So that again uh, strengthens our, um, our notion, our, um, our advice that do not go for the risk factors, screen all pregnant women. Because family history is not known in many of them and no known risk factors were there in 25% of the women who were screened positive for GDM. Now, screening methods. So what we have recommended in our guidelines, both for Pakistan guideline and for MENA, IDF MENA region guideline, is that just uh, focus on two or three doable screening uh, protocols. Fasting oral glucose tolerance test with IDSPG criteria for uh, blood sugar uh, values. And if women cannot tolerate glucose because most of them, they have nausea and vomiting in early pregnancy and they tend to throw uh, the high uh, glucose solution. So, uh, so they can be given fasting blood glucose. Those women who cannot come in fasting state and cannot keep fasting for eight hours as is recommended in pregnancy. So in that, in those women, 
non fasting ogtt that is tipsy criteria is recommended where no fasting is required hemoglobin a1c may be advised in the first trimester but only to know uh, the presence of pre existing diabetes and to exclude fetal abnormalities otherwise hemoglobin a1c is not considered as a screening marker so as you can see that if we do an ogtt oral glucose tolerance test or a nice criteria and non fasting ogtt so these are the cut off values for a nice criteria or who criteria and in ogtt that is fasting oral glucose tolerance test idspt criteria is uh, widely uh, accepted and is recognized so these are the values fasting 1 hour and 2 hour that is 92 180 and more than 153 if we are uh, looking at the non fasting ogtt that is tipsy criteria here the cut off of blood glucose is 140 mg per day so generalization and application of such protocols have limitations at community levels in resource constrained settings so what we did was that in the same uh, wdf tdm project we selected a cohort of women who underwent single non fasting ogtt versus fasting ogtt for screening of hyperglycemia in pregnancy although the positive predictive value was only in 21.8% uh, as compared to negative pre uh, predictive value which was 98.84% but at least we would not miss any screen positive women for blood glucose so women who are diagnosed what should be the diagnostic criteria now the diagnostic criteria i earlier showed as is recommended by idspg criteria and dipsy method now what is the diagnostic criteria women diagnosed for the first time in pregnancy should be considered as having over diabetes and not gdm if any of the following criteria are fulfilled hb1c more than 6.5 fasting plasma glucose if it is more than 126 mg per dl and random blood glucose if it is more than 200 mg per dl then she should be considered as having pre existing diabetes and not gdm once the woman is diagnosed as having uh, gestational diabetes or diabetes in pregnancy the target values or the control levels have to be different from the diagnostic values and in this the fasting uh, should be 70 to 95 mg per dl and 2 hours postprandial should not go beyond 120 mg per dl this is the values target values in a woman who is diagnosed to have diabetes and the control is to be uh, is to be educated uh, around these values so screening when to screen pre conception screening is the ideal uh, time at first infertility visit a woman should be screened most of the uh, guidelines they advocate screening at 24 to 28 weeks and the Uh, but in postnatal uh, postnatal screening should not be missed same is true for the follow up now uh, daily smbg is advised as compared to laboratory testing because laboratory testing is not possible four times a day and preferably blood sugar monitoring should be done postprandial in pregnant women so as to avoid macrosomia in fetus so the what should be the glycemic targets uh, they need to be more strict to achieve better maternal and prenatal outcomes the preprandial bedtime or overnight glucose targets should be 60 to 99 mg per dl and peak postprandial glucose load must not go beyond 130 mg per dl with a hemoglobin a1c of less than 6% now there are a few uh, a few recommendations uh, when you can suspect that the woman can have gestational diabetes mellitus 
So this is a study which is lately published uh, and it shows that higher fetal adiposity is associated with GDM and from as early as 20 weeks of gestation before the biochemical diagnosis of GDM is there in a South Asian population. So the fetal abdominal wall adiposity, if it increases by more than 3 mm, then that can be a diagnosis, that can be uh, a suspicion for uh, development of diabetes uh, later in pregnancy. So if it is done as early as 20 weeks of gestation, before the biochemical diagnosis of TDM is there. So this is again a food for thought and we need to have more studies on this, that whether anterior abdominal wall adiposity in fetus is diagnostic or is a precursor, is diagnostic for uh, future development of uh, diabetes in the current pregnancy in a woman. So this study extends previous observations of fetal and neonatal adiposity in GDM to early fetal life at 20 weeks, predating the biochemical diagnosis of GDM and in a high risk of South Asian ethnicity. Again, uric acid uh, association of first trimester uric acid levels and development of gestational diabetes has been studied in many, many, uh, there, there's a lot of literature about this, especially uric acid levels at 15 weeks of gestation is more significantly associated with the risk of development of GDM than uric, serum uric acid levels in the second or later third trimester of gestation. So again, this is the food of for thought in for our population, uh, and we need to look at this. Finally, treatment, of hyperglycemia and pregnancy. Uh, the thing is that, uh, the question is that, is pregnancy a good time to give bad news about prematurity, preeclampsia, polyhydramnia, increased rate of cesarean section, or are we too glucocentric? So we need to have a holistic management of the woman that includes her psychological, her physical, and her biochemical uh, biochemical uh, control as far as blood glucose is concerned. So, uh, talking about uh, this, uh, to uh, now about the management, to have a good perinatal outcome requirements of oral hypoglycemic drugs and insulin regimen combinations and timing in pregnancy needs modification. They are very much different from a non-pregnant individual. So as pregnancy progresses, we will not be discussing about the types of insulin and types of oral hypoglycemic drugs that will be that can be addressed uh, during question answer session. But just a food for thought that as pregnancy progresses, increased fetal demand for glucose and the progressive lowering of maternal fasting and between meal blood glucose levels increase the risk of symptomatic hypoglycemia, as there is continuous transfer of glucose from mother across placenta to the fetus. Any oral hypoglycemic drugs or insulin, any insulin regimen which has been declared safe by FDA in pregnancy requires combinations and timings of medications or insulin injections quite different from those that are effective in non-pregnant state because of this continuous transfer of glucose across the placenta from mother to fetus. So in the first trimester, let us begin with a dose of 0.5 to 1 unit per kilogram. A smaller proportion of total daily dose is basal insulin that is less than 50% and prandial insulin, they are required a higher proportion that is higher than 50%. And remember that insulin requirements are likely to decrease by 10 to 20 percent in the first trimester uh, because of nausea and vomiting and increased insulin sensitivity. While the requirements in later trimester are likely to increase by two to three times. Similarly, we must be aware if the be aware that if insulin requirements decrease whenever any time in second or third trimester that shows failing in placenta 
and increase in fetal surveillance or the appropriate mode and time of delivery should be considered. So in conclusion, blood glucose screening, uh, in conclusion, uh, blood glucose screening should be done at first uh, booking visit irrespective of period of gestation, preferably in the first trimester. Universal screening should be done. Risk-based screening may better not be looked for. OGTT should be offered after an overnight eight hours fasting and not 12 hours fasting. And IDSPG criteria should be followed. In resource-constrained settings, only fasting blood glucose or DIPC criteria should be followed. Control values of blood glucose are different from diagnostic values because diagnostic values tend to be higher as compared to control values. In the end, the different insulin therapies used in pregnant women do not affect obstetric and fetal outcomes as far as those insulin uh, have been approved by uh, FDA. It is poor glycemic control prior to and during gestation, which is associated with poor obstetric fetal outcomes. And any insulin regimen, type and dosage for pregnant women require combinations and timings of insulin injections different from those that are effective in non-pregnant state with strict glycemic targets. So with this, I give my special thanks to all participation, all participants. Special thanks to Diabetic Association of Pakistan, WHO Collaborating Center, and also to Professor Abdul Basit, Mr. Mansoor, and members of ID team, and Sanofi Pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much. With this, I end my presentation. Thanks a lot, and we'll be taking question and answers after all the participants have spoken and I'll be happy to answer the, any questions and queries that you have in your mind. Thank you once again. Salam alaikum. Thanks. Camera on there. Eh? Yeah. My boss, I was already up. Oh, to be focused. Sorry, Mansoor. Hello.
Okay. Assalamu alaikum uh, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saab, uh, for your kind introduction initially. And thank you, thank you very much indeed for. Mansoor, my voice is coming back. Mansoor? Mansoor? आवाज जो है मुझे रीपर्कस कर रही है दोबारा मेरी आवाज दोबारा मेरे मेरे पास आ रही आवाज मुझे Hello? Awaaz aari, Mansoor? Is me dubara awaaz aari. Ni to mujhe, mein bol nahi paunga. Mujhe hi sunai de riya awaaz. स्टार्ट कर दूं जी सर ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच मंसूर और सैफ का भी शुक्रिया सर आप सोफ्रान आवाज आ रही है ओके स्टार्ट कर दूं ओके अच्छा मेरे ख्याल में आप शुक्रिया का टाइम निकल चुके तो we start from directly through uh, the presentation ek baat jo main kehna chahta hu ke we start from directly kya aap jo hai wo live chat kar sakte hain kuch question main apni presentation mein karunga and i hope ke you will all reply that in the chat box to chat box mein aap reply kar sakte hain okay जी जनाब तो 
you can see this and I, I think many of the, uh, you people can recognize कर सकते हैं अगर कर सकते हैं तो जरा लाइव चैट बॉक्स में जवाब दीजिए ये कौन साहब है तो इस तरह टेस्ट भी हो जाएगा कि चैट बॉक्स में आप लोग कुछ जवाब देंगे मुझे या नहीं देंगे ही इज वन ऑफ दी ऑल टाइम ग्रेट बैट्समैन फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलिया चैट बॉक्स में जवाब नहीं आया अभी तक जी ये है सर ड्रॉ सर डॉन ब्रैडमैन एंड सर डॉन ब्रैडमैन इज द पर्सन इज द फर्स्ट पर्सन जिनको जिन्होंने सेंचुरीज की सेंचुरीज बनाई थी तो सेंचुरीज की सेंचुरीज बनाना कोई आसान काम नहीं तो इसी तरह ए सेंचुरी बैक द न्यूज पेपर फ्रॉम द टोरेंटो द टोरेंटो डेली से Toronto doctors on track of diabetes cure, and these two gentlemen having succeeded succeeded in discovering insulin. So, sal pehle, jab wo 1921 mein insulin ki discovery, and we are now celebrating the hundred years of. insulin discovery and different part of the world different countries association are celebrating this in a different way and this is one of the canadian celebration who issued a stamp with a letter and a first insulin vial and if you can see over here that the first insulin vial has got a 100 unit in 10 cc which means 10 unit per cc hain ek cc mein 10 unit hote the us waqt jab ye bane the is baat ko khayal rakhiyega and then the google has its student showing the 100 year celebration of insulin discovery and pakistan is not behind in celebrating thanks to the people in the uh uh people from dab diabetes association of pakistan uh professor the late professor samash shera now uh professor abdul basit and his team uh in the uh in the dab and in bite uh jinhone itni awareness de di not the creating the awareness not only in doctors physicians but also to the patients and also to the the bureaucrat and the technocrats and that's helps a lot in launching this this stem as a celebration of of 100 years of an uh, insulin discovery thank you very much professor abdul basit and your team uh from the uh, dab and of course uh, the uh, the bakai institute of diabetology is not far behind in doing this जनाब सेलिब्रेशन तो हो रही है बट स्टिल सौ साल हो गए इंसुलिन के डिस्कवरी की बट दे स्टिल हैव अ बिग चैलेंज 
hatched in front of us of glycemic control. Control of blood glucose level. And this control, this challenge is not only limited to the third world country or the underdeveloped countries like us, but and also prevalent in most developed country of the world, like in US, having an HBA once in an average of eight, UK an HBA once fee of 8.4, Canada an HBA one C of 7.9, Poland of 9.0. So a big challenge in front of us, even after 100 years of discovery of insulin. And uh, I'm sure this is Mr. Aslam, a 46 year stack to diabetes. But this patient, I have a day or night in the clinics. As if type 2 diabetics for six years with a BMI of 22, he has lost his vision in left eye in the last year and had a BK in the right lower limb six men back. He is still on glimipride six milligram, Ceta, Glypton, and Metformin combination 50 by 850 milligram twice daily, aspirin 75 milligram, Ramipril 10 milligram, and Atovastatin of 20 milligram. The scrat is about 1.25. So microalbumin of is 350 milligram of DL, and his last HbA1c is 9.2. So my dear friends and colleagues, this is the patient you see day and night. So what do you think is his blood glucose is in control? I'm sure not. Bilkul nahi. 9.2. So what will you do if this patient comes to you? You have many choices. Will you add a SGL2 inhibitors, insulin, GLP-1 agonist, TZD, or you will, you will just satisfy with this, this conditions and HbA1c and will change nothing, we'll say, okay, we do more exercise and comply with the diet. So what do you think, what you will do? Write in the chat box. Chat box mein jawab dein jana. Thoda sa kuch andaza ho ke aap log kya soch rahe hain. Ta ke is mein baat cheet ho sake. Agar aap, you can write in the chat box, you can write in. So, would you add? Of course, you have multiple choices in this one. This patient surely not having, uh, not having uh, an HBA one C up to the mark. It should be less than seven in this case. Or some people may may think about the six point five or less. What is your opinion? So I'm sure most of, of you people will agree with me that this patient may needs insulin. Although the SGLT2 can be initiated at this time and they can be initiated with the insulin as well. So, when you talk with the patient that, okay, you need insulin, your blood glucose are not good enough, or your sugar is very big, HbA1c is very bad, you have insulin. Now, what do you do with your patient? You have to do with your patient. You have to do with your patient. You have to do with your patient. 
کہا اور ڈاکٹر صاحب انسولین سے تو بڑی شوگر کم ہو جاتی ہے ختم ہو جاتی ہے ڈاکٹر صاحب میں انسولین تو نہیں لگاؤں تو یہ کانسیپٹ جو لوگوں کے ذہن میں ہے پیشنٹس کے ذہن میں بھی ہے کہ انسولین سے شوگر بہت کم ہو جاتی ہے یہ پیشنٹ تو کہہ رہا ہے کہ نل ہو جاتی ہے ختم ہو جاتی ہے تو یہ کیا ہم لوگ کیا سوچتے ہیں انسولین کے بارے میں واٹ آر یور کنسرن اباؤٹ تھنک اباؤٹ اٹ از اٹ از ویٹ گین یار یہ بڑا مشکل کام ہے انسولین شروع کرنا بڑا ٹائم لگتا ہے اس میں میرے پاس پچاس ساٹھ پیشنٹ دیکھنا ہوتے ہیں ڈاکٹر صاحب اتنا ٹائم کیسے دوں اس کو کیسے سمجھاؤں کرنا کیسے ہے پھر اس کے ڈوز ایڈجسٹمنٹ کیسے سکھاؤں اس کو پھر اس کے بعد لگانے کا طریقہ سکھانا پڑے گا تو اگر یہ 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 جو آپ کے کیا کنسرن یو کین ڈسکس ان دا چیٹ باکس آپ چیٹ باکس یوز کر سکتے ہیں اس میں ڈسکس کر سکتے ہیں کہ کیا آپ کے کنسرن So fear of hypoglycemia is one of the biggest barrier to start insulin. And there are surveys identify the challenges with the rigid regime and the fear of hypoglycemia. And this fear is not only for the patients. It is also for the doctors and for the patients. And you can see the survey This is study showing the percentage of patients decreasing their insulin dose following an hypoglycemic event. And you can see both type 1 and type 2 diabetics. After having an event, about 79% of the type 2 diabetics and about 60% of the type 1 diabetes decreases their dose significantly after having an event. اور ایک سوال آتا ہے کہ بھائی ڈاکٹر صاحب انسولین کے بعد کہیں ایسا تو نہیں ہم صبح اٹھ ہی نہیں پائیں گے رات میں سوتے ہی رہ جائیں گے یہ وہ فیئر ہے جس کی وجہ سے بہت سارے مریض اپنا گلوکوز جو ہے بلڈ گلوکوز کنٹرول نہیں کر پاتے ہائپو گلائسٹیمیا کا جو فیئر مریض کے اندر بیٹھا ہوا ہے اس کی وجہ سے وہ ٹارگٹ اچیو نہیں کر پاتے وہ کہتے ہیں ڈاکٹر صاحب میں جیسی جو ہے وہ ایک سو چالیس سے نیچے کرتا ہوں تو مجھے تو کچھ ہونے لگتا ہے ایک سو تیس سے نیچے کرتا ہوں تو میرے ہاتھ پاؤں کا مجھے پسینے آنے لگتے میری گھبراہٹ ہونے لگتی ہے مجھے کچھ ہو جائے گا ڈاکٹر صاحب دس از دا فیئر ان دا پیشنٹ مائنڈ دس از دی ون آف دی بگیسٹ فیئر فار ہیونگ اے گڈ کنٹرول آف ڈائبٹیز ان دا پیشنٹ مائنڈ اینڈ سملرلی The fear of this hypoglycemia also lies in the physician mind. And you can see in this study, uh, both primary care physician and the diabetes specialists think that they, they can treat their patient more aggressively if there was no concern about the hypoglycemia. So, یہ فیئر ڈاکٹرس کے فزیشن کے ٹریٹنگ فزیشن کے خاص طور پہ جو جو فیملی فزیشن ہے اور ڈائبٹیز پریکٹس جو ڈاکٹرس نہیں کر رہے ہیں ان کے ذہنوں میں اچھا خاصا فیئر ہے یار کہیں ایسا نہ ہو کہ رات میں مریض کی شوگر کم ہو جائے اور پھر جو ہے وہ بات میرے میری پریکٹس جو ہے وہ خراب ہو جائے اور مریض کو کچھ ہو This fear lies in the both physician and the diabetes specialist mind as well. So the fear of hypoglycemia is one of the biggest, biggest factor, barrier, both in controlling the blood glucose, both in the mind of, of a patient as well as the physician. So how will you address this issue? think about it and we can discuss later on so nowadays this is the uh, insulin profile jo aajkal 
इंसुलिन अवेलेबल है उसमें आप देख रहे हैं कि दीज आर दी डिफरेंट प्रोफाइल ऑफ द इंसुलिन द एस्पार द डिस्को एंड द ब्यूलाइसिन द अल्ट्रा शॉर्ट एक्टिंग एनालॉग इंसुलिन है देन द रेगुलर इंसुलिन एंड यू हैव देन द बेजल इंसुलिन लाइक द एनपीएच डेटरमिनर एंड ग्लार्जिन एंड जिनका एक अपनी एक प्रोफाइल है और इंसुलिन की of course you can see the amp which has got a peak and then you have a datimer and the glargin which, which are usually the peak class which is yeah, insulin so which of the following insulin is the second generation basal insulin what do you think is the glargin u100 glargin u300 datimer or dulaglutide these now you can write your answer in the chat box if you can so this slide is this showing that the how the, this is the process how the basal insulin developed from first generation to the second generation insulin and law and you can see initially when the nph was formulated in 1946 we have for many many years we have only in nph as a basal insulin with all jo bhi uske sath apne problem the but we are we were actually managing with this these problems and we know that the nph has got a uh, uh, the peak and therefore can cause a uh, 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 midnight hypoglycemia or the hyper hypoglycemia and people who are using them and then the era comes where the analog insulin comes into to the market and the the first uh, insulin analog the basal insulin analog the glargin and then the datimer comes into the market with less more pkpd uh, uh, stable pkpd profile than the nph and there is no peak at all and therefore there are less chances of hypoglycemia uh, and is a daytime hypoglycemia and the nocturnal hypoglycemia as compared to the to the nph insulin and now we we have a second generation uh insulin in pakistan uh, the the glargin uh 300 and the insulin dulidac is also available uh in pakistan in a combination form so the glycemic uh, uh the glargin u300 when comparing with the uh, the glargin u uh, uh u100 the two jo has more flatter uh flatter uh pkpd profile and the duration of action is more longer than the glargin u100 and therefore you have a better results and you can see over here that the glargin uh 300 versus glargin uh 100 and you can have you see the the glargin uh 300 have a flatter profile as compared to the glargin u300 uh, uh glargin uh, u100 and then the comparison of the glargin the similar uh, they have got, uh, uh, the glargin 300 with the idec uh, 100 they have the comparable pkd uh, pdpk profile so the uh 2g exhibit more stable uh, profile with the lower variability compared with the glargin 100 after dose optimization in type 1 diabetics and there is a 17% less uh, uh pk and pd within a day variability ye jo day to day within agar aap jaise 24 ghante mein lagate hain to wo jo variability hai uh, concentration ki variability it is less in uh, the the two jo uh the u300 as compared to the uh, uh to the u100 glargin 
And this is the mode of action. How this the longer acting, the U300 makes longer acting. And you can see over here when the glargine, uh, glargine injected into with their pH, the glargine, the uh, pen is mojud hoti hai, pH 4 pe mojud hoti hai. Aur jab aap inject karte hai, uh, 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 normal pH hai, wo, uh, 7 hai, to 7 pH pe ye jo hai, wo precipitate ho ke, ek depo form kar lete hai. Aur us depo form se phir wo gradually uh, jo hai, wo uh, release hoti hai, jiske ho, jaysa uska mechanism or action jo hai, up to 24 hours this is glargine and then the glargine u300 uh, uh, mein jo hai wo concentration zyada hai yani ke 1 ml mein 300 units maujood hai jabki glargine u100 uh, u100 mein 1 ml mein 100 units maujood hai so iska matlab hai ke two third reduction in the volume takriban uh, glargine 300 spin. So the smaller volume of the injection and when you inject it, there is a more compact sur subcutaneous depot with a smaller surface area. So a small surface area hai, or a compact uh, jo hai, wo depot banta hai in the subcutaneous tissue uh, uh, after the precipitation. Uh, or therefore, there is a more gradual and slow, slower release uh, from this depot uh, and therefore you have a more consistent and stable uh, pharmacodynamics and, and pharmacodynamics and kinetics of the two geo as compared to the, the glargine u hundred. So uh, this is a very short film about one minute regarding mechanism action of, uh, of the two geo harvest X. It will clear your concept how it is, it kiss the nakis of Suti say, U three hundred Banai Gaye or Pir Kistravo up now mechanism on action. So, जब सब कने सब कुटेनियस टिश्यू में जाती है, ये इंजेक्ट होके, then it forming a depot. This is the depot. और ये जो है वो ग्लाजिन U100 है, लेंटस यानी, और लेंटस जब इंजेक्ट होती है, तो वो भी डीपो बताती है, but it's a big large depot, and because it is concentrated, two third and you can see 1 ml mein concentration zyada hai uski uh, uh, 2GO ki. therefore there is a release slow release uh, of the uh, of the uh, the molecule insulin molecule from the hexamer uh, to monomer form and this slow release causes a long action more than 30 uh, 30 hours and therefore, there is no peak at all. Slow release, ki se, from the, this depot, uh, there is no peak. So, you remember this patient HbA1c, which is 9.2. So, what is the contribution of fasting blood glucose in this level of HbA1c? Agar kisi ka HbA1c 9.2 ho, so, how much fasting is the contribution of fasting? 80%, 50%, 30%, or 20%? So, we, we know that if someone's HbA1c on the higher level, if it's more than 8, then its contribution of fasting is more than more than more. So, at the HbA1c of of uh, nine, more than 80%, 80% of the fasting contribution to his HbA1c. And therefore, if you remember why uh, uh, when uh, glargine in the market, mein, 
तो एक नारा लगा था जिसको कहते हैं स्लोगन था कि फिक्स द फास्टिंग फर्स्ट वाई द Why they fix the fasting first? Because the basal insulin controlling the fasting blood glucose very well, and when you have a controlled fasting blood glucose, you are you are starting with a lower blood glucose in the morning, and therefore your postprandial peak are not as much as you starting a blood glucose fasting blood glucose of three hundred as compared to a fasting blood glucose of hundred. therefore you fix the fasting first and this basal insulin and now the two you uh, having an effect similar to the you uh, a similar effect controlling the basal in, uh, fasting blood glucose and therefore there are less excursion of the post blood uh, post prandial blood glucose as compared when you have a fasting blood glucose more than 200 जब नाश्ता करेंगे तो उसके बाद पोस्टप्रेंडियल एक्सकर्जन बहुत ज्यादा हो एज कम्पेयर टू तो वो पेशेंट जिसकी फास्टिंग ब्लड ग्लूकोज हंड्रेड है वन ट्वेंटी है वन थर्टी है अगर इस तरह वो शुरू करेंगे तो नाश्ता जब करेंगे तो वो मैक्सिमम जो है 200 तक जाएगी और ओरल हाइपोग्लासिमिक एजेंट जो है वो अच्छा काम कर सकते हैं एज कम्पेयर व्हेन यू स्टार्टिंग ए फास्टिंग ब्लड ग्लूकोज ऑफ 200 प्लस सो दैट इज व्हाई यू आर सेइंग दैट फिक्स द फास्टिंग फर्स्ट एंड देर यू कैन decreasing the postprandial excursion so another question which comes into the mind of the patient that i worry that it it will be painful and uncomfortable ha mareez jo hai wo needle phobia jab aap kehte hain sui aapko insulin inject karenge to mareez kya kehta hai nahi doctor saab are sui se mujhe bahut dar lagta hai to ye jo phobia hai kyunki wo bachpan se hamare zehno mein baitha hua hota hai maaye bachcho ko darati hain कि डॉक्टर साहब से इंसुलिन लगवा दूंगी ये जो फोबिया है और ये फोबिया सिर्फ पाकिस्तान में नहीं है पूरी दुनिया में ये फोबिया पाया जाता है सो so, ये इन निडल फोबिया जो है वो अच्छा खासा जो है पेशेंट्स के में मौजूद है एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट से दे आर अनकंफर्टेबल विद द निडल्स एंड दिस इंसुलिन पेंस एंड देर फोर जब जब सरेंजेस आई थी एक तो जब आप इंसुलिन की बात करते हैं तो मरीज समझता है कि पता नहीं वो कौन से सिरिंज होगी जिससे वो लगेगा तो वो समझता है वही वो फाइव एम या थ्री एम वाली सिरिंज होगी और वो जो है होगी तो लेकिन जब आप कहते हैं कि भाई ये सिरिंज है तो फिर उसको कुछ ढारस होती है कुछ उसको इतमान आता है अब जो नई सरेंज आ गई वो तो बहुत ही उनकी निडल साइज भी कम है उसको उसका डायमीटर भी कम है and now we are jab aap unko pen dikhate hain ke you are we are not talking about injecting insulin with the syringe but we are talking about the injecting insulin with the pens then they can make a difference to wo jo barrier hai uh, insulin ke pens wo jo phobia ka wo kam se kam hota chala jata hai and therefore uh, the this this pen devices help a lot uh in reducing the barrier to the insulin because of their they are easy to use and they enhance the the confidence of the patients they improve the adherence uh uh to the patient to the insulin and they improve the tre- treatment satisfaction and also they improve control and improve the quality of life ke aap usko is pen ko apne jeb mein rakh ke aap kahi move kar sakte hain या पेन को बॉक्स में रख के कहीं भी मूव कर सकते हैं आपको जो जो बॉटल्स के साथ उसको कैरी करना और सरेंज को उसके साथ बर्फ के साथ और उसके साथ पूरे बॉक्स के साथ एक कैरी करना मुश्किल लगता है तो ये पेन्स आने के बाद से जब से पेन आए हैं उससे ये ये जो मसला था मसाइल बड़े हद तक जो है वो बेहतर हो गए और हम देख रहे हैं कि पिछले कुछ अरसे में जो है इंसुलिन का कंप्लाइंस बेहतर से बेहतर होता चला जा रहा है 
So this is the the one of the pen uh, from the U U three hundred Glar gene, which is two zero, and you can see uh, this pen has got a uh, four fifty units of insulin, which is uh, much more. The the, the Glar gene U hundred has got a three hundred uh, unit. This has got a four fifty units, and this is a one point five ml, uh, uh, while the uh, the glargine has got the one amyl. So you have, and you can, uh, you you can convert its one to one conversion rate, and you can use a maximum dose of eighty units, uh, and which which can be adjusted by the one unit. So it is very uh, comfortable to the patient when you're using a pen device with any insulin. So what are the steps into uh, to insulin initiation? So जब भी बात होती है insulin को start करने की तो there there should be uh, something you, you you should have in your mind कि क्या insulin की जरूरत है patient को या नहीं जब तक कि आप patient treating physician जो है वो confidence में नहीं होगा ये नहीं सोचा होगा कि हाँ इस patient को जरूरत है इस पेशेंट का एच बी वन सी अनकंट्रोल्ड है इस पेशेंट को फुट का अल्सर है इस पेशेंट को आई की प्रॉब्लम हो चुकी है इस पेशेंट को दिल का दौरा पड़ चुका है इस पेशेंट को जैसे कि अभी प्रोफेसर शबीनास ने जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज पे लेक्चर लिया इस पेशेंट को जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज है इस पेशेंट को जो है वो प्रेगनेंसी विद डायबिटीज है तो जब तक के आप ये नहीं सोचेंगे कि मैं रीजन फॉर वट इज द रीजन फॉर और इनिशिएशन ऑफ इंसुलिन जब तक कि आप अपने आप को सेटिस्फाई नहीं कर पाएंगे तो मरीज को भी सेटिस्फाई नहीं कर पाएंगे यू शुड हैव सम लॉजिकल रीजन फॉर इनिशिएशन ऑफ इंसुलिन एंड देन यू शुड एड्रेस एज वी एड्रेस द बैरियर टू द इंसुलिन जो ज़हन में जो जो मरीज के ज़हन में है कि इंसुलिन के लगाने से शुगर कम हो जाएगी बहुत ज्यादा कम हो जाती है वो जो है वो इंसुलिन सुई से डर लगता है बहुत ज्यादा चुपती है प्रेग्नेंट लेडी कहती हैं कि कहीं ऐसा तो नहीं बच्चे को को कोई तकलीफ हो जाएगी वगैरह वगैरह वजन तो नहीं बढ़ जाएगा इस तरह की बात एंड व्हाट आर द लाइफ स्टाइल ऑफ द पेशेंट सो यू नीड टू इंडिविजुअलाइज ईच एंड एवरी पेशेंट हर मरीज पे हर इंसुलिन काम नहीं करती हर मरीज के लिए हर इंसुलिन नहीं है सो नीड टू इंडिविजुअलाइज इनिशिएशन ऑफ इंसुलिन according to your patient lifestyle and the barriers in 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 his, in his mind and what the support you can uh, you can uh, give to this patient and it is a partnership of decision making ye nahi ho sakta ki janab maine pen pe likh ke de di ke janab 20 300 20 unit aur likh ke de diya likh ke dene se insulin likh ke dene se kabhi bhi blood glucose control nahi ना ब्लड ग्लूकोज कंट्रोल होगा और ना बाकी कॉम्प्लिकेशन उस पर काम में आएंगे जब तक के पेशेंट को आप बैठ के आप क्योंकि पेशेंट के आपके पास टाइम नहीं है तो डायबिटीज एजुकेटर यू शुड हैव डायबिटीज एजुकेटर डायबिटीज एजुकेटर भी नहीं है तो आपका कोई तो असिस्टेंट होगा उस असिस्टेंट को आप बता दें कि भाई इंसुलिन कैसे लगाते हैं या मरीज को किस तरह लगाना सिखाते हैं आज तो बड़ा वीडियो मौजूद है तो हर कोई लगा सकता है या वेबसाइट पे जाके आप वीडियो देख सकते हैं लेकिन आपको बैठ के मरीज को बताना होगा आपको या आपकी टीम में से सो इट्स ए टीम वर्क अगर आप चाहते हैं कि ब्लड ग्लूकोज उस इंसुलिन लगाने के बाद कंट्रोल हो जाए तो आपको बताना पड़ेगा कि कंट्रोल लगाना कैसे है एडजस्ट कैसे करना है डे बाय डे डेली जो प्रॉब्लम है तो उसको आपको कोई हेल्पलाइन नंबर भी देना पड़ेगा ताकि उस जो पेशेंट के कंसर्न है वो उसको एड्रेस कर सके सो इट्स ए टीम अप्रोच वेर द पेशेंट इज द प्रायोरिटी सो दिस पेशेंट सो वट विल यू डू द इंफो फॉर दिस पेशेंट हाउ विल यू एड्रेस दिस पेशेंट हैज गॉड नाइन पॉइंट टू एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू एग्री विद मी दैट दिस पेशेंट नीड्स एन एच बी इंसुलिन एंड दिस इज द एलगोर फ्रॉम द एस एंड कैन सी दैट Uh, the one of the most common and most easiest way to start insulin 
is to start a basal insulin, uh, either a, a, a glargine U100 or a glargine uh, 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 U300. Any of the basal insulin you can start, or the detimer, uh, you can start. Uh, and then you can then adjust the dosage and uh, uh, adjust the dosage. And if the prandial insulin is needed, then you can add the prandial insulin with this one as well. So uh, the glycemic control, and they, we have got these two RCTs, the, uh, uh, the glargine 300 versus glargine 100, the addition study, which compare the HbA1c reduction between the glargine, uh, comparable uh, uh, HbA1c reduction with uh, glargine uh, 100 and 300. Uh, there are low risk of confirmed or the severe hyperglycemia and type 2 diabetics with the glargine uh, 300 and the lower or the similar hypoglycemic risk in the type 1 diabetic with the glargine 300 as well. And when comparing with, with the with the glargine, with the IDAC, you can have a lower incidence of, 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 uh, of hypoglycemia with the glargine 300 as compared to the IDAC at any time of the day or the, or, or or the nocturnal hypoglycemia. So you have got less hypoglycemic effect, just a Marie sepsis other attack. And, and you can see uh, uh, these, these, these are the addition study, uh, the similar effect or the, uh, uh, the glycemic control with the lower HBNs, uh, HbA1c, uh, with the lower uh, the hypoglycemic effect uh, and similar in the type 1 diabetics, they have the similar effect in, in, with the U100 and U300. Sometimes, when the disease is very complex, it is very complex. It is very complex. It is very complex. It is the complex. It is also a barrier to the, uh, to the, uh, to the insulin initiation. And therefore, this is another study which is showing that uh, about 27% says that taking insulin at the prescribed time meal uh, and every day is a complex and uh, is a difficult issue. And 81% pe pe uh, people wish that they, I wish insulin regime would fit in daily life changes. So, you have to insulin regime dena hai according to the patient lifestyle. Individualize your regime to, according to the patient lifestyle. This is important here. अगर ये बैरियर निकाल दिया तो कंप्लाइंस बेहतर हो जाती है जब कंप्लाइंस बेहतर होती है तो इंसुलिन के जो रिजल्ट्स हैं ग्लाइसेमिक कंट्रोल बेहतर हो जाता है एंड व्हेन यू हैव अ गुड ग्लाइसेमिक कंट्रोल देन यू कैन हैव अ लेस चांसेस ऑफ क्रॉनिक कॉम्प्लिकेशन एज़ वेल सो द द U300 द Tujo हैज गॉट अ फ्लेक्सिंग डोजिंग टाइम इसका मतलब ये है कि आप 3 घंटे आगे आधे पीछे हो सकते हैं इसमें कि आपको रोजाना एक ही टाइम पे इंसुलिन नहीं लगाना कि जैसे बाकी इंसुलिन के साथ आपको फिक्स टाइमिंग है कि भाई आप 10 बजे अगर आप लगा रहे हैं तो फिर 10 बजे ही लगाना है या आप आधे घंटे आगे पीछे हो सकते हैं बट विद इट विद इट टू जो यू हैव अ मोर फ्लेक्सिबल डोजिंग टाइम एंड यू कैन प्लस माइनस 3 आवर्स यू कैन मैनेज विद दिस वन कि आप 3 घंटे आगे पीछे करके इसको लगा सकते हैं विद अ सिमिलर रिजल्ट्स and with a further with a uh, no increase in the hypoglycemic uh, events <clears throat> as well and the, the another concern that the uh, most of the patient have in their mind that the insulin put uh, put on weight and yes of course insulin put on weight because uh, uh, agar aapne khana peena uske saath uh, jo hai wo control nahi kiya aur exercise nahi ki so insulin se kya har cheez se tablets se bhi weight badhna shuru ho jayega and this is the study which showing that you have similar weight changes at 12 men between the uh, the uh, the glargine 200 and the glargine 300 so there are similar impact on in terms of the weight control so uh, uh, the tujo has got the various population uh, uh, jisme aap ये दे सकते हैं डिटाइप वन डायबिटिक्स अदर पेशेंट 
uh, the patient with the impaired renal function, the older population, the pregnant lady, the and the the addition junior uh, trial, which compared in the children. So, in conclusion, uh, with glargine three hundred, a more compact and smaller depot uh, than the glargine hundred, which led to more uh, gradual and the slower release of insulin from surface of the depot, more consistent. Con, uh, constant and prolonged glucose lowering profile, maintaining tight blood glucose control for approximately 30 hours. And so, what do you mean by optimization? Increasing the dose quantity, increasing the dose frequency, or modifying the insulin regime? What do you think about it? So all of the above is the right answer. In insulin optimization means that you can increase the dose, you can, uh, can increase the frequency, and you can add on insulin. Like with the 2-GO, you can add on the, 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 uh, the other insulin, the rapid acting analog insulin uh, to control the blood glucose level. So, uh, in conclusion of, uh, of, of this, while initiating and optimizing the insulin, patient concern need to be addressed like hypoglycemia, weight, needle phobia, and others need to be addressed with glargine U300, more constant and long glucose lowering profile, more tight blood glucose control can be achieved. And this uh, gentleman, Sir Elia Johnson, Jocelyn in 1923 said, Insulin is a remedy primary for the wise and not for the foolish, whether they be patient or the doctor. Everyone knows it requires brain to live long with the diabetes, but to use insulin successfully, it re requires more than brains. Thank you very much for your attention. I think question answer will uh, session ke baat kare. Him. Uh, my name is Dr. This is my disclosure. Uh, my name is Dr. Zaman Sheikh, and my topic is something new in diabetes. I'm going to tell you uh, something new uh, which recently came in the world or in Pakistan, and many uh, technologies are drugs, they are not yet available anywhere in the world but soon they are inshallah they are, uh, going to come in market and they are in pipeline but by no means i emphasize you or enforce you to use this expensive medication in every patient this is just to give you information about the updates going on in the field of diabetes this is very famous slide taken from United Kingdom um, Kingdom uh, Prospective Diabetes Study UKPDS, and this tells you that if you control your HbA1c, reduce your HbA1c by only one percent, you will get these benefits: twenty-one percent reduction from death, and thirty percent, fourteen percent, forty-two percent in all the micro and macro score complication. Now the point is raised that if you are controlling your hyperglycemia up to the extent that hypoglycemia start occurring, such a meticulous control, even then why cannot we prevent complications? This means we don't know diabetes yet. Our situation is like this. 70% uh, really we don't know 
what is diabetes, what is pathogenicity, what is the actual management of diabetes. And only 30% we know. This means we have to do so many things. Uh, we need so many new drugs, technologies to not only treat diabetes successfully, to prevent all the complication, but eventually uh, our target is to cure the diabetes. This is a very, uh, this is a very interesting slide. This is year 1916 from Britain, newspaper cutting. Diabetes may be driven from the system by good whiskey, says scientist. Uh, now, now, in 1916, we know there was no medication available, either injectable or oral, for the management of any type of diabetes. Even first uh, anti-diabetic drug insulin came in the market in 1922. Uh, this is the reason we are celebrating centenary of insulin nowadays. Uh, but, but this is before the era of insulin even. No drug was available in 1916. So, so uh, strange type of, funny type of uh, things were be used for the management. And we know whiskey alcohol uh, is a toxin. And when anybody consume uh, ethanol, then our liver start fighting with the toxic, uh, toxic effect of the alcohol. And there is less hepatic glycogenolysis. So there is transient hypoglycemia. So this is the reason it was supposed to be a therapy for the diabetes in that time. So let us see what may be the possible cure of the disease of diabetes. Up till now it's a dream, but when beta cell replacement become, uh, will become a reality, like prevention of immune destruction of the beta cell, preservation, replacement, or regeneration of beta cell by any means, then cure will be possible. Then in type two gene therapy, uh, th th this is a vector. Uh, this is a vector, viral vector, adeno associated viral vector, and this is gene. If we introduce in the body this gene through this vector, then possibly we can uh, treat the genetic defect of type 2 diabetes. And we know 50% of pathogenicity of type 2 diabetes is genes, 50% is environmental. In type 1 diabetes, if immune therapy become possible, like Tipli, Zumeb type drugs, many research going on, these type of drugs, they actually suppress or finish the autoimmune destruction of the beta cell at the beginning of the type diabetes. And we know cytokines from toxic T cells, they are released causing autoimmune destruction of the beta cell. And uh, this is the uh, reason that uh, uh, it, it, it progresses. At the beginning of type 1 diabetes, uh, many beta cells are still preserved. They are manufacturing insulin. So at this time, at the beginning of type 1 diabetes, if we are successful in controlling autoimmune destruction, then possibly we may cure type 1 diabetes. So this is another possibility. In type 1 diabetes, vaccine is possible, like BCG vaccine, which was first used in 1921, long safety record. And uh, nowadays, it is used for prevention of tuberculosis and bilateral cancer. Temporary, it temporarily uh, increases tissue necrosis factor, which eliminate toxic T cell and destroy beneficial regulatory T cell. So this is the mechanism. Possibly this may be useful in type one diabetes at the beginning. And we know majority of the uh, initiating factor for autoimmune destruction of beta cell is cox viral infection, P1. So if anti uh, vaccine is possible against this virus, uh, then cure of the diabetes type 1 is, uh, is a possibility. And these researches mainly are done in Finland, Finnish study. And we know most uh, uh, commonly it is type 1 diabetes is seen in Finnish. Uh, here, uh, rest of the world, it is 5%. And in Finland, it is more than 10%. So they are more concerned, worried about type 1 diabetes. Or if beta cell transplant or pancreatic transplant become possible, uh, then uh, the cure is possible. And these are this is stem cell therapy is still a dream. And uh, nowadays we are using some classification of diabetes like type one diabetes, type two diabetes, GGM, and so on. 
but but many patients they are not fitting in this classification like thin built type 2 diabetes we see type 2 diabetic responding on oral drugs but they are thin no visceral obesity uh, no metabolic syndrome so this is uh, entirely different group of uh, type 2 diabetic patients we see and they are not fitting in any one classification which is ex existing nowadays so in future we may use this classification severe autoimmune uh, diabetes severe insulin deficiency diabetes severe insulin resistance morbid obesity related and modern age related so let us see what is next in diabetes technology this latest glucometers like this this is like a watch but this is uh, a reading of blood sugar 128 through perspiration uh, because in uh, perspiration so it uh, sugar is there and this senses sugar from from uh, the uh, this fluid which is beneath this watch this is another watch uh, like glucometer this is uh, instrument which uh, fits here ear lobule and uh, through electromagnetic waves it uh, senses sugar in the blood in the ear lobule and she is reading her blood sugar so this is fda approved and available in america and europe this is Dexcom, a directly paired iPhone. So six iPhones are connected with this instrument, a small instrument which is attached to the body of a young boy or girl with type 1 diabetes. So six cell phones will read live blood sugar in this child. Child is sitting in a school, father is in America, mother may be in Khaipur, um, sister may be in Lahore. Uh, all have got cell phone and they can live uh, read, see the blood sugar at that moment from the child. One is at the teacher and one with the student, it's a, a, a student or young boy or girl. So, so this is Dexcom FD approved, available in America and Europe. This is now came in Pakistan, freestyle library from a bird company. And even over the clock, you touch the, the sensor and this will instantly tell you accurate blood sugar. It is rather expensive, but once you uh, put this uh, disc for two weeks, then you can take reading any time of the day. Now, IT behind device. Now, this is educator, this is patient, and through these gadgets, they communicate. This educator will recall this or uh, memorize this patient. Uh, they look now there is time of your uh, insulin and uh, these many insulin are needed because your blood sugar is this so this is interaction uh, uh, artificial intelligence now cgm continuous glucose monitoring it is fully implantable latest version works for six months and it is wireless this is the shape of that instrument very delicate this is a large picture actually it is very small Six months, wireless CGM, continuous glucose monitoring. Now, what next in continuous glucose monitoring? Uh, it is integration of continuous glucose monitoring devices and fitness watches. Integrated with your body movements, exercise, heart rate. Looks into patients' daily routine and see what is affecting blood sugar level. So this will tell the patient that uh, this is your routine of life. And uh, this is your insulin dose. This is your blood sugar anytime. And now this is time for exercise. And this correlates uh, through artificial intelligence, uh, all the control of the sugar of the patient. Now, fusion molecule. In future, we can use two, three drugs in one solution or one pills in, in laboratory. Novel uh, first experiment is done with PCS, uh, PCSK9 antibodies. Uh, which is uh, cholesterol controlling drugs, latest one, and GLP-1 in one molecule, in one solution. So in laboratory, they put two, three drugs together, and through one injection or through one pill, one can consume even three, four uh, drugs at a time. Now, this one drop of blood will do a magic. Near, in near future, your laboratory will be at your home. And within minutes or seconds, you will come to new, your HP1C, glucose, lipids, creatinine, hemoglobin, and this is a marker of the cardiac failure, anti-pro-BNP, 
this is uh, LFT and this is electrolyte. So in home, just put drop of bullet here, put this in cell phone and reading of all these parameters in few seconds or minutes. This is another magic instrument, size is like match stick. You put a small incision in the skin and put this, put this subcutaneously, very easy operation. And for six months or one year, this will work osmotically through interstitial fluid pressure. And this piston goes on slowly, slowly, slowly here till six months or one year. And you can put any drug in this, concentrated drugs. First experiment is with GLP-1. In near future, we can use insulin here. One insulin injection or implant for six months. This is needle-free uh, gadgets for insulin. In new developments, first oral GLP-1 is septaragonist. This is FDA approved now. Pioneer study proved the safety and efficacy. Uh, it is the tablet semaglutide daily, first time. Uh, rather than injection, now we can use oral uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist. Uh, Ozempic is the name of injection of semaglutide, but name here is uh, different. Same drug, different name, ribelsis oral. Very potent, weight reduction is there, potency same as injectable. Once weekly DPB-4 inhibitor like Umariclipton from Japan is in pipeline, once weekly. Every Sunday you take take, take one TPP4 inhibitor. This is imiglibumin, first oral oxidative phosphorylation blocker. It has got three mechanisms on liver, pancreas, and muscle. In time trial, proved the safety and efficacy. Glucose activator. It has got glucose, strong glucose dependent action. So there is no hypo. And it has got dual action on pancreas and liver. Certiums, uh, resveratrol. For long, physicians were knowing that red wine has got antioxidant uh, agents. And many cardiologists, they used to give one glass of red wine. His prescription uh, is antioxidant. So research workers started thinking, what is their antioxidant in red wine? So they came to know it is resveratrol. It inhibits enzyme, they degrade cyclic MP, which controls signaling pathway associated with glucose uptake and insulin production. This is a mechanism of action. Now, Cushing syndrome with hyperglycemia with metabolic syndrome. One drug, myfepristone, is available now, cortisol receptor antagonist, and it is FDA approved. Nasal spray glucagon. We have been using glucagon as intramuscular injection up till now, but now FD approved uh, powder is there, nasal spray glucagon. Immediate treatment of hypoglycemia. Immediate and best treatment. Now let us talk about latest insulin. These are smart insulin, biodel, with built-in borate glucose sensor, carbohydrate dissolved the hexamer. So it is glucose dependent. It takes care of fasting blood sugar. It takes care of postprandial glucose three times a day or maybe four times a day. Same insulin will cause uh, uh, glucose dependent action, works for 24 hours. This is ultra rapid Lispro. We are using Lispro RS part plane in Pakistan, but this is ultra uh, rapid available in uh, uh, Europe and America, FDA approved. It is the fast taste insulin absorption. So there is less postprandial glucose excursion and more physiological. Insulin deglutate, on the other hand, is a, a truly basal insulin. Half life is more than 24 hours. So true single dose with multi-hexamer formulation. Trade name is Triciba. This injection is not available in Pakistan alone, but in combination with the rapid acting insulin and with GLP-1 receptor agonist, once a day it's available. Very slow release insulin, maybe up to 140 days, or pegylated insulin for 45 hours, they are in pipeline. Something newer, this is the very good news, uh, once weekly insulin, we have been using once weekly GLP-1 receptor agonist nowadays, but in near future, these are in phase three trial. Uh, IPODEC is from Novo company, BI from Eli Lilly company. Once weekly, every Friday, you give one injection of insulin. Oral insulin is another possibility. 
like capsule this is sublingual spray it is not oral it is buccal through push uh, this uh, uh, in oral cavity and this it helps out so buccal uh, spray in rectal in unconscious patient with decay or hyperosmolar coma why you give intravenous infusion of insulin why not rectal insulin in uh, unconscious patient we have been using some drugs like peraldehyde rectally so why not insulin so maybe in future we are using this in unconscious patients with diabetes this is nasal spray this is a special instrument you put this inhale and take this off this is aphrasia which is a powder inhaler it's powder aphrasia fda approved in 2014 available in america and europe it is equivalent to uh, short acting insulin rather better than that because this is aphrasia inhaler powder and this is uh, lispro and you see more physiological role quick acting quick finishing role with uh, inhaler and this is a, a liquid formation formulation aphrasia was powder uh, is powder this is liquid uh, name is strange it is dance 501 so strange name is given but what uh, it is what it is so this is uh, uh, inhaler but a liquid form this is patches of the insulin we are using testosterone estrogen is skin patch why not insulin these are new insulin pumps first or old insulin pumps in 1963 this was the size of the insulin pump and in 1976 78 size reduced and uh, current insulin pumps are very small this is a beauty queen of some country and you see she is where is she is type on diabetic and wearing insulin pump such a small pump babies with type on diabetes they are wearing insulin pump like this this is semi automatic insulin pump which is available in pakistan for a bit expensive however dream of fully automated closed loop pump artificial pancreas is now a reality this is like this this senses interstitial glucose which is equivalent to blood glucose and uh, through this computer it sends wireless information to this pump and same amount of insulin is injected in subcutaneous tissue whatever the live blood sugar there so this is closed loop or artificial pancreas fda approved just to come in open market this is by hormonal bionic pancreas insulin plus glucagon if you put two uh, drugs in uh, same uh, uh, machine but two different chambers then there will be no hypoglycemia because whenever there is hypoglycemia or tendency for hypoglycemia due to insulin immediately glucagon will be released from another chamber so there will be no hypoglycemia but size is quite large in future hopefully this there will be small size uh, scientists are using prime lentide along with insulin oral drugs in type 1 diabetes up till now the only uh, treatment is injection but in near future oral drugs uh, are coming or have come actually this is oral sota sota glyphosate a uh, potential treatment for type 1 diabetes this is the trade name but with insulin so if you give this oral drug along with insulin in type 1 diabetes so there are two benefits number one or overall total dose of insulin 24 hour will be reduced number two fluctuation in blood sugar sometime hypo sometime hyper it will also be controlled or neutralized neutralized so dual sglt2 sglt1 inhibitor this is sotagliflozin ema european Uh, medical agency approved not fd approved yet a uh, trial was tandem 3 on 3000 patients this is dopagliflozin also used along with insulin and it is eme european medical agency approved uh, european commission is an adjunct to insulin not alone and approved on uh, in 2019 but fda yet to approve this uh, drug Uh, provided BMI of type 1 diabetic patient is more than 
And if there is no ketosis, then you can use dapagliflozin along with insulin in type 1 diabetes. New, this is perhaps my last slide, new biomarker of DKD, diabetes kidney disease, serum cystatin K, and genetic marker of oral one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Yes, mashallah. Uh, we now will invite uh, questions from the panel. Uh, the the, we are now open for questions, basically, uh, either from Professor Zaman, Professor Shabin, uh, me, myself, or Zahid. Any questions? If there are no questions, uh, in the meantime, can I, for just for the sake of uh, discussion, uh, uh, start by saying that I am very grateful to Sanofi Aventis for taking this initiative. Diabetic Association of Pakistan, as you would know, have been working for the community, um, people with diabetes for the last 40 years. Last year, after the sad demise of Professor Abdul Samashera in March uh, 2020, we decided uh, that I shall take this heavy responsibility of uh, being Secretary General of Diabetic Association. I am lucky that I have been uh, given two joint secretaries, Professor Shabin Naz and Professor Zaman Sheikh, who helped me right, left, and center to run the association full stop. We are now in the process of expanding the services, extending the profile, revamping the association, taking it to new horizons, continuing the legacy of Professor Abdul Samashera. In this regard, I am very grateful to Sanofi, who took this initiative with us of doing the, uh, the webinar, sponsoring it, and helping us out with uh, with our expansion plans. If there are no more questions, I would now request Dr. Nadeem from Sanofi for his closing remarks. Dr. Nadeem. May I, from the platform of Sanofi, uh, thank you all, uh, especially Professor Shabinaz and, and Zaman for very comprehensive uh, lectures. Uh, Dr. Zahid Mia, who was uh, giving the sponsored talk uh, from the platform of Sanofi, all his speakers were uh, very comprehensive, very elaborate, and spoke elegantly. Uh, uh, I think there are some technical hitches, uh, so let me, on behalf of Sanofi Aventus, thank the audience and the speakers, and on behalf of DEP and NADEP, uh, thank uh, Sanofi Aventus and my colleagues, uh, Shabin, Zaman, and Zahid, for very, very good webinar. Thank you for your attention.